I realized that I, I wanted to teach more than anything. And I felt that by teaching, I also was learning. And the more I taught others, the more I was able to experiment. I would, when I was at ABC television, they would come to me and say, you know, how do you do that? Why are your foundations, why do they look the way they do? Well, how are you highlighting and shading the way you do? And I realized that most of the makeup artists really didn't have as keen an understanding of highlighting and shading as I was taught by Ben Nye and Kiva Hoffman and, and several of the other artists that I studied under. So I thought, okay, I'm going to take all of my understanding of corrective makeup and I'm going to create a class. So I started with small classes and then gradually there were more and more people that wanted the instruction and I got calls, you know, tons and tons of calls and suddenly I went from just being a journeyman makeup artist at ABC also to having these big classes at night. So I thought, well, wait a minute. Uh, this is really interesting. This is going somewhere. Then they came to me and they said, conflict of interest. You're teaching and we can't allow you to advertise that you're a makeup artist working for ABC. So I said, okay, well, I'm out. So I left ABC and I went completely into being an independent makeup artist and to teaching. There were, there were no, there were very few, let me put it this way, women in the industry. They just weren't in, they weren't makeup artists. The makeup artists were all men. And when I opened my doors to students who wanted to become makeup artists, gradually more and more women came to the forefront. I'm proud of been able to be a catalyst uh, for allowing women to enter the profession. And, uh, all, all, you know, gays, you know, I mean, they, and, they, and, and various race, races were not originally back then, 40 years ago, permitted into it. It was primarily a, a white man's job. Not anymore. My proudest moment as a makeup instructor had to be when I saw Matthew Mungo receiving an Academy Award. He was my first graduate to receive an Academy Award. Since then, Bill Corso has also received an Academy Award. I, I'm, I'm proud to have been influential in their success. But there have been many, you know. Every time I look at the credits roll by and I see somebody's name that I know that I taught, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good feeling. It's a real feeling of satisfaction, of accomplishment. I loved being involved in monster makeup and horror makeup in the very early portion of my career. What I did was simply to be as creative as I could possibly be, follow the script that I was given and come up with whatever the writer envisioned and the director wanted. And I saw, after having worked in the industry for quite a few years, I saw that the products that we were using uh, there were excellent products, Max Factor, Ben Nye, all, all of the products that we use, RCMA. Um, I, I would do a lot of mixing. I thought, well, wouldn't it be nice if we didn't have to do all this mixing? So this is when I came up with our base tone related uh, neutralizers. I learned how to make makeup in two different places. One was at the Max Factor company, the other was at uh, ben Nye Company, and I learned more from Ben Nye than from anyone. Uh, however, I was always, always wanting to to change things. If you use an oil that will break the makeup down after the body temperature starts to to rise, then your makeup really isn't going to serve a professional purpose. It's good. It's going to require more work. It's going to slow down production time. So what I did was I I thought, well, what can I do to make makeup better? The amount of pigment that we put into the product is a puzzlement to other cosmetic companies. Because they'll try this and they'll say, well, how do how you get all of this pigment into this makeup? And that's the secret. And the secret is in being able to put the pigment in with the waxes and with the oils in a conventional manner, then 
process it, very much like you process fine chocolate, so that it removes the excess vehicle, the excess oils and waxes, leaving behind a higher percentage of pigment. How we do that is, I can't discuss. <laughs>the altar bases are amazing. You can put it on with a dry sponge, you can put it on with a, with a wet uh, sea sponge. There are no other professional uh, makeups that are, that are oil-based makeup or cream makeups that will really go on successfully, as successfully as mine, with a wet sea sponge. Mine goes on because there's so much pigment in it and we've removed all that vehicle that when you put it on, it goes on very evenly and it covers. I think most popular are the neutralizers, and then the, uh, the Dermaseals and the Ultimats. Oh, here we go. We're going to just name everything, aren't we? <laughs> so it's, it's the Ultimats are extremely highly pigmented makeups. And I'll tell you how I came about this. Ben and I had a product that I helped him make. And it was a beard stipple product. And it was a dark, dark black product that we put a lot of pigment into. And I looked at this and I said, wow. A lot of pigment in this, unlike all any of the other products that were in the line. And I started using it for eyeliner. And, and then finally, 10, 15, 20 years later, when I made my own line, I thought back and I thought, wow, I remember that. Let me make a line that's got a tremendous amount of pigment, but not just black. I'll make it in taupe and brown and warm brown, then lighter colors that would be in the same, the same, same as the neutralizers. The highlighting colors became the derma seals, and then the darker colors, the browns and the taupes and the black, they became the ultimates. So you, it split off, that concept split off into two different categories, ultimates for eye makeup and the derma seals for corrective makeup and for concealing. So it's all a matter of, of working uh, with a product that has more pigment. That's the secret. I just turned 71 and I'm really looking forward to continuing to work and to teach and to inspire others, inspire young people to go into the profession in a manner that is sophisticated and it well represents them as artists and it also serves the profession well. I don't know that anyone really needs to follow in anyone's footsteps. I think what one needs to do is to create their own footstep template and to keep a lot, making that, that template grow and to, to, to do makeup artistry as they envision it, to be creative, to create their own style and to learn as much as they can from as many people as possible, but never try to copy any other people. You can emulate, you can be inspired by, but to copy is not being artistic. Be inspired and create your own style and have passion and by all means, practice, 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 practice. The more you practice, the better you're going to be. And that's the secret. This is Rudy, Rudy Blasco. Rudy has history. Rudy was born in St. Petersburg, Russia, not Florida, Russia. And we brought him into Helsinki, Finland, and to become part of our, uh, our advertising and marketing plan there. And uh, he became the first cruelty-free dog for cosmetics. And he's still today, this is 15 years later, is the Joe Blasco cruelty-free mascot. And... Uh, what do you say, Rudy? I think he's tired. He's trying to keep up with my schedule. <laughs>